today with Larry Yoder of the Yoder Farm, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his maple syrup operation. So, Larry, can you give us a little background on your farm? Well, I'd be happy to, uh, Brittany. Uh, we're located uh, just north of Fort Wayne, Indiana, and uh, the farm is of about 200 acres, and it's a family farm. We're organized as a limited liability company, and so multiple family members are involved in the ownership and, uh, and the operation of the farm. Mm -hmm. And we have focused on uh, diversity of, uh, of crops, especially specialty crops. And one of those uh, crops, of course, is maple syrup. Mm -hmm. Now, the Vermonters would have you believe that uh, that's the only place in the world yeah. that uh, maple syrup is made. But actually, there are more than 100 producers in Indiana, ranging wow. from very small hobby operations to uh, uh, people who uh, tap several thousand trees. Mm -hmm. And so on the farm uh, here, we tap about 400 uh, trees and uh, make maple syrup then for the retail market in the Fort Wayne area. And uh, uh, to do maple sugaring, one must, of course, have sugar maple trees. Uh -huh. Not every farm is going to have those trees. Of course. We're fortunate here in that the soil conditions and the natural growth is, mm -hmm. is such that sugar maple is the predominant tree in the woodlands uh, right through the Cedar Creek uh, uh, Valley. And so to make maple syrup, every spring, in about mid-February, we will go out and we will drill a hole and put in a, a tap. In fact, I have uh, some examples of uh, the spiles that we use. These mm -hmm. spouts are, are driven into the tree. Here's an antique wood one that was used uh, back in the late uh, 1800s. Uh, wow. Now metal or even plastic uh, spiles are used. And... Uh, on these spiles, one then is a hang, a uh, sap bucket, and uh, uh, these these buckets have a, a hole mm -hmm. on the side, and uh, uh, those spiles act as not only the collection point for the sap, but also as a way to hang the bucket. So every day we go through and we will uh, collect sap, and uh, on a good run, this bucket will fill in a day's time wow. or less. Mm -hmm. And other days, one may get almost nothing. Mm -hmm. And when the sap is uh, collected, it's brought into the sugar house, stored in tanks, and uh, it's then boiled in this uh, piece of equipment, which is called the evaporator. And uh, this is wood-fired, and uh, one starts with about 40 gallons of sap, and uh, boils that down to about one gallon of, of syrup. So one removes wow. a lot of, of, of water. Mm -hmm. And so when we would uh, be boiling here, uh, I wouldn't even be able to see you across the pans because this is uh, filled with a cloud of, of, of steam. <laughs> of course, at the time we're doing our interview now, this is mm -hmm. the off season. Mm -hmm. And so the sugar house is only used during the time of from about mid-February to the end of uh, end of March, when uh, we're in full operation, when the syrup uh, is at proper density, which we check by a thermometer and uh, uh, also by a hydrometer for specific gravity, mm -hmm. uh, it's very similar. It would remind you very much of candy making, and uh, the sugar house smells as if it's mm -hmm. a candy factory too. And so, when we're at proper density. We finish then with a product that looks like this.